All right, in the last video, we kind of went over how to write uh, Lewis dot structures for um, some halogens. I think we did uh, hydrogen, or not halogens, but for diatomics, uh, we did nitrogen and uh, hydrogen uh, on the periodic table and how their Lewis dot structure come, to, come together. And we talked a little bit about uh, the octet rule. Uh, octet rule and about how it's a rule, not a law, because it doesn't always necessarily, uh, valence electrons aren't always necessarily eight um, all the time and to be stable, but uh, it's a good good guideline, and, and we're going to talk about writing Lewis dot structures uh, using that rule. <clears throat> so we did diatomics last time. Uh, this time we're going to talk a little bit about um, some guidelines and helpful hints when writing out uh, Lewis dot structures uh, for compounds. Um, so the first one that we're going to talk about uh, is with halogens. And let me even switch color here. Halogens are this group right over here on the periodic table. These guys right here. All of those in there. Those are all halogens. And basically the rule is, is that halogens, and generally, of course, you, know, you use a lot of weasel words in, in chemistry, but generally, um, halogens do not form double or triple bonds. So generally, you know, for a first year chemistry class, as you're writing out your little dot structures, you're not going to write any halogens uh, with double or triple bonds. So you know that if you have a halogen in there, uh, halogen maybe with oxygen, that the bond between halogen and fluorine uh, or fluoride would be a single bond because it's not going to be a double or triple bond. So that's a helpful hint. Um, the next one is going to be specifically uh, for oxygen right here. And that's that oxygen does not like to form triple bonds. So no triple bonds for oxygen. So oxygen does not like to form triple bonds. It will form double bonds, though. Um, we actually know that in its diatomic state, um, it has six valence electrons for each O2. So that's 12 total, and it'll actually want to form a double bond between those two, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So we know this has eight valence, this has eight valence because they're sharing uh, those on there. So it will want to form double bonds, just and even single bonds, but just not triple bonds. Um, the third is, let me switch colors here again, hydrogen does not like to form double or triple bonds. So hydrogen, and which makes sense because it only has, you know, two valence electrons to give up, or two electrons total to give up. So hydrogen let me spell it right here. Hydrogen, no double or triple bonds, which makes sense because you know you've got hydrogen here and it only has the two electrons to give up, so any bond that it's ever going to have with anything is going to have to be a single bond. Um, and then the third. Uh, and maybe not the final, but the, the last one I'm going to kind of talk about here is with carbon. And and actually, let me preface this here a little bit. Um, there, there's a periodic trend of the table, one of them being metallic nature of the periodic table. And basically, what that is saying is as you go from right to left across the periodic table, things get more metallic more metallic. As you go down the periodic table, 
they get even more metallic. So uh, silicon is more metallic than nitrogen, for instance. Uh, potassium is more metallic than magnesium, for instance. Uh, francium would be the most metallic thing uh, on the periodic table. So <clears throat> it's saying that as you go to the left and go down, that's a periodic trend, uh, things become increasingly more uh, metallic. Uh, generally, whenever you're writing out Lewis dot structures, your central uh, atom, the thing that you uh, connect all your other bonds around, is going to be the most metallic atom. Well, sometimes that's not always the case uh, with everything, but generally it's the most metallic atom. The exception to this, or one of the maybe the rules to this, is that carbon loves to be the central atom. Mm. So if you're writing through, you know, maybe uh, a couple different uh, Lewis dot structures and you're just being, you know, you're, you keep coming up stuck or you're not making it work and carbon's not your central atom, uh, generally that's where you're going wrong. Make carbon your, cent your central atom and you'll have uh, a lot more success. So these are kind of some trends um, with uh, the periodic table and uh, Lewis dot structure, or not really trends, but guidelines or rules that will make it easier uh, to write out. Uh, Lewis dot structures. In the next video, I'm going to apply these set uh, of, of rules or, or guidelines, and we're going to write out some Lewis dot structures.